Hey folks, I'm Dieter Melhorn. In this video, we're going long line trolling for crappie. Now on this particular trip, I'm fishing on Lake Wiley. We started out kind of up in the middle of the day. We let temperatures warm up a bit. And in the beginning of the trip, it was fairly sunny. Uh, we went into a creek where I had caught fish the previous day. And uh, we were trolling around and uh, it just wasn't producing. We were actually finding more bass in here than we were finding anything on some of these points and stuff. Uh, we worked our way out of this small creek, out toward the mouth, picked off some perch and uh, put some of those in the boat and eventually found some small crappie, but there was no big concentration of them. So what we decided to do was change the game. And one thing with fishing, uh, fishing for crappie is that things can change fairly quickly, especially during the transition periods of uh, going from summer to fall, fall to winter, uh, spring to summer, winter to spring. These trans transition periods create kind of unstable stuff that's going on with the water temperature. So we decided to try another area, getting a little later in the day, and this started to pay off. This is that B&M rod. Mouth. Are you serious? Nice. Little fat crappie. That's a good crappie nice. there. Crappie, boy, not crappie. You just hanging out crappie, in crappie, crappie. What? I'm hanging out fused. There in Missouri. Missouri too I'm long. fused, man. Look at that slab master. Yeah, that's a fat. Baby. All right, white or black? Uh. That is a uh, black crab. Black crab got bars on it. Vertical bars. There you go. Now my buddy Mark, he likes to have a spinning reel handle on the same side as a bait casting handle. I'm one of those people that has it on the opposite side. I am right-handed and I crank a bait caster this way and I crank a spinning reel this way. He was giving me a lot of crap about that. Did you lose another one? Backwards reel. Did you lose another one? Yep. Ah, dang. That's it's about, it's about 12, yeah. Like it's supposed fishing. to be like, like Jeff Manning. Like fishing with That's Jeff Manning. That's what I got to start doing now. Yeah. Do the bowler man effect. Dang. Dang. Oh, that's the problem. I ain't got chartreuse and black. I got red. Ah, yeah, he spit it. Blue metal face. Look at it. Sucked his spit eyeballs out. out. Spit it out. Sucked his eyes out. All right, guys. We popped a couple of fish. Making a turn in here. Sucked his eyeballs out. Bit his head off. He, that's all that fish bit. Precision biting there on that one. Uh, now we found some fish on this little point. Caught a couple. We're gonna drag across them again. See if we can spank them. Mark Monster. got him a fish. Monster. Mark finally buttoned, buttoned one up. Man, he's too he short. Got he got, yeah, he got, he got bit by something. Oh yeah, old flathead tried yes, to get sir. hold of him. I'll throw him back out there. Put a bigger hook in him. Yeah, he gonna be close. I, nah, I don't, I don't think he'll make no. it. I'm going to say no. No, I don't think he'll make I'm it. Say no, I'm I don't think he's going to make the show, man. I'm going to say no. On his precise measuring board, oh, is that he's it? Way under, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> way under. I've actually, on that mark, yeah. it's it's actually. It's That's fresh, too, man. That, yeah. That old flathead bit in the hammer. Looks the top fin, too. Yep. He's going to die. Yeah, more look here. Yeah. Look here. Chomped that door. Broke his, broke his fins yeah. off. His spines. He's alive. Yeah, he is. Well, lucky in two, two times in one day. Missing the frying pan, missing the flatheads, and missing the coronavirus. So, they lucky. Oh, yeah. Dang, Big, that's a mongo perch. perch. That's a mongo sucker Big there. Big fatty. Liking some chartreuse. It's funny, those things are getting a little bit of yellow tint to them. I noticed that the other day. It must Eating be all this chartreuse off. baits. Is that what it That's is? That's what it is. Chartreuse is rubbing off on them. Chunk him in the tank. <laughs> now the technique we're using is just really slow trolling, long lining as some people call it. Basically what we're doing is putting out jigs, uh, usually 16th ounce to 32nd ounce jigs behind the boat. A pretty good ways. How far you put them kind of depends on how fast you're going. There's no exact science to doing this and you really can't do it wrong. The speed of the boat will dictate pretty much where those jigs fall in the water column. You're going fast, it's gonna pull them up higher. You go slower, they're gonna fall more. So I put them out a pretty good ways is the best way to describe it. We troll along anywhere from a half mile to a mile an hour and kind of let the fish tell us what's going on. On this wrong rod again. Wrong rod, got my on man the reeling back with the boat. You see how he refuses fluid, to see turn how that, I am. refuses to put that handle. That's oh, a crappie. that's a slobber knocker. That is a big and It's a slobber sign. knocker. That's the one we're looking for. That is a slab delicious one right there, pal. How about a pound? That's good though. You catch, put 60 of those in the cooler and we not only uh, get a ticket and go to jail, but we have a lot to eat. 
Pretty fish, good fish. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Now what we're doing is we're just using, like I said, these jig heads, these, these weighted jig heads. They're 16 ounce to a 32nd of an ounce. Uh, this kind of decides where they're gonna be at in the water column. And then I've got some Carolina hookers uh, jig skirts that I'm putting on there. The uh, popular color for us was black and chartreuse, but they make a lot of different colors. So take a look at what they got. Uh, a lot of different options there. I like to vary them up. I like to put out about three different colors in a spread and kind of see what's working. Some days it's all the difference in the world. They're hitting one thing better than another. Some days it doesn't matter. And then we just tip them with a minnow. That's the easiest way to do it to get the most bites. You can catch them without minnows on them, but I like to catch fish, so I'm gonna cheat a little. Right side. slobber knocker. That's in that right side handle too. Another slobber knocker. You ain't got no excuse now. They on your hey, side I of the don't boat need now. Them. You, you don't want to need them now. I know, they're on your side of the boat now. Another slobber knocker. Dang. Three quarter pounder. And that was on uh, just a jig. Jigless. Just a, just just a mineral head. roid. Mineral roid on a jig head. That's a good fish, dude. Yeah. He'll make the eight inch krill. They're right up there on the bank, can't they? That is a ticket. Yeah, he's got two rods laying in for it. Uh, we may have hit something. It's either time of day or the location. Or we just started holding the mouth right. Well, we come across a lot of open water, never got bit, and then we get up here on the bank in about eight feet of water, and poof, guess what? We so caught a knocker. Catching them 60 degree water, a little warmer than where we were, so who knows? Yeah. Let's see if my man up here can catch some more. School me. School, School me, me, buddy. School me. Go get your notepad. School's in session. Now you may ask yourself, why was he catching more on one side of the boat than I was? Well, sometimes it can be a depth issue. Sometimes that boat can be in a better sweet spot uh, uh, as far as the depth, especially if you're on a bank. If you're on one side of the boat and up here shallow, this may be deeper. But what was happening here was Mark was putting his baits further out behind the boat. This uh, extra length put them in a better, sweeter spot than where my baits were at. The other thing was, it was a little more of a subtle bite, and uh, he was really keying in on that, but it didn't take long, and I made a comeback, sorta. Boom! Look at that. Nice fish. See what the sun back here started to see some more showing up. Oh, look at that, look at that, look at, look at the sonar, look at the sonar. Don't say, don't look at huh. that's, that's, that's some oh. fish there. You got a floater? No. Dang, look at you. Hey, that's the one you put the dye juice on. Yes, sir. Man. Quality, know. not quantity. You're dialing them in now, man. Yeah, just like the sun. Getting dialed in as the sun goes down. That's just it. I'll that's be cool off when it goes down. Now, if you're new to fishing for crappie, be sure to check your local regulations. They change from state to state. Many times, season to season, one year to another, these regulations can change. Uh, we have an eight, eight inch limit currently, uh, but it's good to keep an eye on that and see if it changes. We're actually in North Carolina, uh, legal for us to use them for bait fish. You know, I fish for catfish a lot and they make excellent catfish bait. You just gotta follow the length limits and the krill limits. And don't cross over into South Carolina, which Lake Wiley is in North Carolina and South Carolina because it's illegal to use game fish on the South Carolina side. Smackaroni, smack it down. And get to use my minnow again. Nice, reusable. Mark's putting smack down on. He started off very bad. I mean, very bad. He had interceptions, I mean, I there were fumbles, back. turnovers, and now, Just mm. back playing with you. Unanswered points. Unanswered points. Just laying back playing, man. I threw my you you threw yours in gear faster than I did. That's what it is. Yeah, but I threw them along the cast. Got one hung up here too. He's staying down. We'll find out what that marks is worth. Oh yeah. Slobby knocky. Mmm. Woo. Mmm. That not be hanging out the other end. He's so deep. I think it popped loose. Yeah, it did. Say a good job, Mr. Bass Fisherman, with you. I got oh, the big down there, man. It's down there. Now that you go, Mark's, the little ones out of the way. Mark's taking care of business here. He's killing them. Uh, we're running out of two things uh, minnows and daylight. <laughs> so, uh, 
good, but it's good fishing. It's good fishing. It's good here in the last little bit. This is, uh, I'd been wanting to come here all day and uh, Mark wanted to fish some other places, but yeah. he told me we'll hit that last since there's probably not any fish there. So. Well, the reason I saved it for last, I know we'd run out of minutes if we got here too early. Right, right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. I've so. done this before. He's looking out for me. I've done this before. Do you, you come up behind this one? Trying to, trying to sneak up on it, man. Sometimes, sometimes you got to bring the jig up behind them and bump them in the tail yeah. with it, and then they'll hit it. Look at that. Top might of get it, on to him too, didn't it? Yes, sir. Good fish. Good bait. Catfish bait. Or a fillet sandwich. Oh, got the camera going late on that one. Dad, damn it! Let's see what we got there. We got nice him barely by the lip. And good fish, dude. Nice one. Pretty black crappy, even though he's white. Well, folks, if you made it this far, thank you for watching. Here are a couple more videos that I think you're going to like. I'd watch that one and then that one. No, no do, do that one first and then that one. I, I don't know. Just watch them both. They're both good.